Hello world, Dino Mega here. In today's episode, I'm going to show Timmy step by step just how easy it is to set up and install version 2 of my Quest system in a brand new third person project. You're welcome to follow along if you'd like. Are you ready, Timmy? Let's do this, Dino. And here we are in the Epic Launcher. And since I'm making a new project, I'm going to go ahead and start up Unreal version 5.3.2. Then I'm just going to create a new third person project that I call Quest Example. Then back in our Epic Launcher, you can go ahead and add the asset to the project. And when you do, you should see the assets folder in your content browser. Navigate to the demo map subfolder and open the map underscore quest demo world. This is the demo world for the project and it includes a number of example quests to show you exactly how all the moving parts work. And when you're done messing around in the demo world, head back to your third person map. And you can find that one in your content folders, third person subfolder, then the map subfolder. And our goal for this video is to get the quest system to load in this new third person project. And to do this, we need to add our AC quest system underscore player controller component to our player controller. Dino, do I have to use a player controller? I don't have one, but I do have a player character. Is that good enough? No, Timmy, that won't work. But don't worry, it's very easy, and I'll show you how to make one. We actually have a few options. Now, unfortunately, our third-person project does not come with one, so we can either use the one that is included with the demo world, or we can create our own. To use the demo world's player controller, just open up the third-person game mode, and for player controller, select the one for the quest demo world. Now if you press play, you should see the quest system initialize. We also see that there's no quest found in the level. And the quest log works if we press L. And if you have any quests left over from when you were playing around in the demo world, you should see them in your new level. At this point, may be good enough for a lot of you, but if you'd like to know how to install this with your own player controller or by creating a new player controller, here's what we need to do. And since I don't have one, I'm going to go ahead and make one. And back in our third person blueprints folder, let's right click and make a new blueprint class. For the type, select player controller. Then go ahead and name it, and then back in your game mode, select this new controller that you just created. And from this point, you are now ready to install the Quest system. So let's go ahead and open up the player controller, then click the add button to add our actor component. And from the list, select AC underscore Quest system underscore player controller. And make sure you do not select one of the other ones. If you do, it will not work. Go ahead and press play. And that's it. Our Quest system is now installed. Now a quick way to reset the player is to use the reset button. And this will get rid of all the data related to the player and quests. Like how we have this intentionally persistent butterfly buff from completing the food turning quest. And this reset button can be found at the start of the demo world, and it's also in the demo map helpers folder if you want to add it to your level. And before you dive in making your first quest, there are a few configuration options on that component we just installed to our player controller. And let's go over them real quick. Head back to your controller and select the component. And now from the details panel, find the quest system configuration section. These are the main configuration options used to initialize the quest system. And the default configuration should work great for most, but just so you know what is here, here's a breakdown of each setting. And if you are just getting started, I do recommend leaving all these options as they are until you're at least through with the tutorial videos. Our first option, set up on load. When it's disabled, we'll let you control when the component initializes, meaning when your side is ready to go, you can tell the quest system it can go. And the description of the setting will tell you which events to call. The save player quest option. When enabled, it will save player progression using the included save and load system. And you may want to disable this if you don't want quest to save, or if you're handling saving yourself in another save game system. Use overlap for quest interactables. This tells the quest system to enable the use of overlap events from our quest actors to detect players when showing the ability to interact with said actor. And you'd want to disable this if you're converting it to a line trace. Now for an example of a line trace, see the instructions inside the demo world's player character event graph. Overlap detect channels. This is where you would set the channel as you want the overlap detection to detect. By default, the quest system will look just for pawns, but you may want to also add vehicles to this. Rescan for new actor speed. A scan will occur on initialization for quest actors in your level, and if you're using any of the built in rescanning features, this is the rate that the system will search for these new actors. And in multiplayer, this scan only runs on the server. Indicator animation mode lets you define the driver for the indicator animations, and there are three options for it disabled use timer and use timeline. By default, it uses the use timeline method, which is the smoothest and has the most options. But you can sacrifice some of this glamour and functionality to be a bit more efficient by switching it to the use timer instead. We can also disable animations by setting this value to disabled. Indicator scan speed is how often the scan for indicators occurs. And in this version, instead of loading indicators all over the map at all times, they are only shown when the player is within range of them. This distance is what the scan is checking for. In multiplayer, this runs only on the client, and we can control this range with our next option. Indicator visible max distance, as the name suggests, is the max distance from the player to show the indicator. And this is based on Unreal units, which are centimeters. 
Indicator animation max distance is the max distance from the player to player animation on our indicators. And this value should always be less than your indicator visible max distance if you're going to use it. Show quest window scene capture is our last option, and it can be used to disable the scene capture component that's used to show the actor in the top left corner of our quest window when it's open through the actor. You may want to disable this if you're looking for a bit of a performance boost. And this is just an overview of these features. The major parts like our indicators and actors, interaction system and the save system, I go over in more detail in the related chapters of the documentation. In the next video, I'll show you how to make a simple quest step by step from scratch. So make sure you check that out if you need help with that part of the system. Thanks for watching and good luck with your game. Thank <laughs> you.